All right. So thank you, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, so this is um, this is a talk from the GNU PG, the package GNU PG Maint team, the Debian GNU PG packaging team. Uh, I'm DKG. I'm Eric Dorland. Um, and there are many other folks who have been working on GNU PG um, over the years and are currently working also on GNU PG. Um, so we're just going to give a little report back about where we are with GNU PG and Debian and what we have planned. Um, and uh, maybe my mouse will work. Um, yeah, so um, there's been lots of people who've been working on it. We want to just say, uh, just to, to be clear there, this has always been a big team effort um, and it continues to be a team effort. So thank you to everybody who has contributed. Um, there's lots more people. That's what that dot, dot, dot is. It probably includes you if you've reported bugs um, or complained about the way things work or made new suggestions. Um, but so. I mean, Daniel's actually done an incredible job this year, has really shepherded the project. I think he deserves a huge round of applause right now. Thanks. Thanks. So, so since last year, we've gotten, um, we've gotten everything moved over to Git for packaging. If you folks just saw my previous discussion, that was one of the things that makes life easier for me as a packager. So that was a selfish move on my part to, to push it. I hope it's useful, and I hope other people feel more inclined to jump in if they have things they can contribute. Um, the team itself has adopted GNU PG2, Libasuon, PinEntry, GPGME, um, so a bunch of the packages that are sort of related to GPG and in the GPG ecosystem are all um, under the package GNU PG maint umbrella now. Um, also since last year, GNU PG is now reproducibly built um, under the reproducible builds thing. Uh, so, so that is awesome. Um, many, many thanks to the folks who've done a lot of work to make reproducible Debian something that we are um, heading towards at a much faster rate than I expected. GNU PG, we're, um, we're happy that to be part of that. Um, version 2.1 of GNU PG has been an experimental for many months, and it's actually been in Debian Unstable for many hours. Um, if you have, <laughs> so we sorry. uploaded it before we started drinking last night. Yeah, we we uploaded it before drinking. Um, so um, sorry to make your slides wrong t uh, this afternoon, Werner, because you said it was in experimental. It's now also in Unstable. It is unstable. Well, unstable <laughs> is all kinds of unstable right now. Um, and so we're making it part of that. Here is our chance to break stuff. This is the beauty of unstable. We're at that time in the release cycle. We want to get more eyeballs on it. We want to find out what problems people have so that we can make it work for everybody um, who is relying on Debian stable to be stable. So um, 2.1 is in unstable. Um, we also did a cleanup of the, um, of the base install on a minimal server. We, there were some complaints, I think justifiable complaints, that things were pulling in by default too much, too many packages on a minimal server install. We want those minimal Debian installs to be as small as possible, um, both for resource consumption and for you know, potential bugs. We, want, we don't want to pull in all the graphical stack just because you want to have GPG available. Um, and so we've cleaned up the default um, dependency arrangements to make um, server installs minimal. We missed that for Jesse. Um, and that's, uh, and ap that apologies are due for that. Um, some folks are pushing that that could be something we could do in a, in a Jesse proposed updates. Um, the release team has been reluctant to take that on, mainly because um, there are no strong bugs open about it, right? All of the bugs are like, oh man, I did this install and it pulled in these extra packages. Is that a release critical bug? Um, and so, so the release team is justifiably um, concerned about trying to make a big change uh, in the dependency ordering. Um, to be clear, there's a workaround. If you have a minimal install and you're like, oh, I really wanted to have the GPG2 packages in there, but the trouble is they pull in all this extra stuff, the workaround is very easy. You just install pinentry-curses instead of installing pinentry um, because the default pin entry will be a graphical one. That's what pulls in the, the, the graphical libraries. So if you do have a minimal install and you're worried that it's too bloated because of your GPG2 dependency, please go ahead and install pin entry curses and then clean out <coughs> the graphical stuff. Um, if you really think that it needs to be done in Jesse, open up a bug and elevate its severity and explain why the severity is elevated and that'll give us the, the recourse to go to the, the release team and start talking through what we need to do to make that happen in a Jesse proposed update. I'm not convinced that that's the best use of our time right now, but if it really bugs you, let's figure out how to make it work. So this is the big news, right? We really want GNU PG 2.1. Um, we want it for a lot of reasons and we want it for Debian in particular. Uh, Debian relies heavily on GNU PG um, for things like verifying our software um, 
We want it because the um, we have uh, updated key storage mechanisms, which should give us some faster access to keys. Um, we want it because it provides us with elliptic curve crypto, which provides us with stronger cryptography for uh, less compute power. Um, we want it for the daemonized processes and isolation, which have potential to um, help people keep their secret key material safer. Um, and we want it because we want to stop shipping stuff that people will have the old broken things available to them by default. So this is a little bit controversial because if anybody needs the old broken stuff to work, it's probably a Debian developer who's hooked into some kind of email <laughs> system that has their old MD5 signed key that simply cannot change and they really need some kind of old broken thing to work. Um, however, that doesn't mean that that's what we should be supporting by default for everybody who's using Debian. It's a mistake for us to offer tools that say, hey, and by the way, this comes with this really cool knife that has blades on both sides um, for regular use. If you want the knife with blades on both sides, you really need to do something special to get access to it. So one of the reasons I personally want to see 2.1 in Debian um, and move the old stuff is that we can move the old stuff out of the way. Um, the older crypto really is not strong anymore, and we need to make sure we can move away from it. So. A brief slide about elliptic curve crypto and what that means. Um, so without going into the math, this is about sort of the social and deployment questions around elliptic curve crypto. So it's a new set of algorithms in the same way that RSA is different from DSA. Um, it's a, it's a, a completely different set of math that's used. And there are different parameter choices you can make um, for elliptic curve keys. Um, ooh, spooky. <laughs> Um, so there are different parameter choices you can make for elliptic curve keys. There are different kinds. And as Werner mentioned in his talk earlier today, um, there are curves from NIST um, that are well-defined, everyone understands, but they come from NIST and there's a little bit of dubiousness about their origin. I haven't heard any strong cryptographic explanation that they're backdoored in the way that some standards that came from NIST were. Um, but nonetheless, there are some open questions about the way they were generated and we would like to not rely on them. They're also harder to implement and slightly slower um, and more prone to mistakes um, than some of the newer kinds of elliptic curves that are being published. And so thanks to Nibesan, who's back there, we actually have this ED25519 and Curve25519, which is a different set of elliptic curve parameters that will be available to us in GNU PG 2.1. And we may even get um, another, uh, another curve that's coming from the same process that's sort of settling on the 255.19 process. So how do we deploy a new algorithm uh, in a way that's useful? So the first thing is that we really need to get a widely deployed base that can do the public key operations with the new algorithm before we start using them, right? If I, if I say, hey, you can encrypt a message to me and here's my key and it's an algorithm that you just don't have access to, then you can't use it. And similarly, if I assign something with my key that's an algorithm that you've never heard of before, you can't verify my signature. So those things are effectively useless. So we care more about getting the public key side of the algorithms deployed first. And then later, we'll make sure that people can start to deploy the secret key side of things. And there will be some you know, people who like to play on the bleeding edge who will deploy the secret key side of things earlier. Um, but the secret key side, in generating these keys, is going to be hidden for the moment behind a, an expert flag in the GPG interface. So that means that if we can get 2.1 deployed, we can verify these signatures, and we get a wide base of people who can handle the, the crypto, then we can start encouraging people to consider switching to it. But we, I don't think we're under any um, expectation that people will all switch over to ECC as soon as they have a copy of 2.1 available. We just want you to be able to use it when you're communicating with other people who happen to use those keys. So, um, by the way, if folks have questions um, or concerns about any of the topics here, give a holler. Yeah. Should be mics around. Yep. So, the 2.1 transition, how's that going to work? Um, 2.0 is going to go away. Um, 2.1 has already replaced 2.0 in unstable. Um, and if we can get 2.1 to the point of stable-ishness enough in unstable, then 2.0 will also go away in testing. It's not co-installable with 2.1. And 1.4, we're going to move to becoming GNU PG1, and the binary will be user bin GPG1, and the binary for GPG2 will be user bin GPG. Um, so most people won't have GPG1 installed. As I said, there are some folks who are going to need it, and they're going to need to figure out how to get that working. Um, we will support the software, 
but they're going to need to explicitly install it on their systems. We're not going to have it available for people to cut themselves with by default. So why the hard cutover? Some people might want to do Etsy alternatives instead. Um, we as a team don't really want to deal with that many moving parts. Um, we have enough bug reports to deal with and we have enough things to get settled. We would like to focus our efforts on the 2.1 stream, make sure that we can support upstream, which is also doing an excellent job of focusing on the 2.1 um, development path. And it creates an additional layer, possibly additional round trips for bug reports. Oh, well, what do you have for Etsy alternatives, for GPG? Um, we want to make sure we've got modern crypto available to everyone by default. We want to discourage older crypto, and we want to just make sure that we're streamlined and focused. So that's why a hard cut over, and we're not going to be going with the Etsy alternatives approach unless someone comes up with a really good argument for why we should. I also don't think it's very, it's a bit disingenuous at this point where 2.1 and 1.4 are different enough that an alternative is kind of lying. Yep. <laughs> they don't really provide the same, they're starting to not provide the same interface. They don't support the same algorithms, and there's lots of new features in 2.1 that just don't work with 1.4. Yeah. So we're going to do the cutover and experimental first. We'll continue packaging um, GNU PG2 as, you know, 2.1 as GNU PG2 in Unstable, but we will experiment with a transition with uploads of GNU PG and GNU PG2 into experimental that shift which one is responsible for the GNU PG package. Um, We'll mail Debian Devel announce when that's available so that you, yes, you can try out um, with experimental on your systems and let us know how we broke everything and deleted all of your personal files um, so that we don't do that to our users. Um, and we're thinking through how to do this um, with uh, mailing to the, all of the reverse dependencies just as a heads up. I'm not sure whether that's the best thing. If folks have suggestions about how to do that, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, you could bring them to the GNU PG mate uh, mailing list. And I mean, I think we should mention too, we're gonna try to be working on this during DevConf this week, so we may actually have something to look at by the end of DevConf, no promises. Yep. Um, so one of the issues about the transition is the, the UDEBs, the Debian installer uses these UDEBs, min, uh, micro DEBs, I guess is the way you could pronounce it. Um, and at the very least, it needs GPGV to verify the um, packages that it downloads. Um, uh, so GPGV is also going to transition, the UDEB is going to transition over to the GNU PG, GPGV. We've already had some discussions with the Debian installer folks and some discussions with Upstream, thank you Werner, um, to, try to, make, to try to streamline that process. Um, and similarly, there's a, there's a special, weirdly architecture independent Win32 UDEB to help the Windows based installer verify things. And that's also going to probably move to the GNU PG2 packages. Um, we currently have a GNU PG UDEB package, which used to be depended on by uh, Partman Crypto for people who are setting up encrypted disks. Partman Crypto no longer depends on it. So we're probably going to make it go away. If you know that you're using GNU PG UDEB for your Debian installer work, um, let us know. <laughs> uh, I did a search of the, um, of the Debian archive via uh, codesearch.debian.net. Many, many thanks to the folks who are maintaining codesearch.debian.net. And the only place this showed up was uh, that, w that we were at all concerned about was Partman Crypto, and it's no longer used there. So if you know of anybody that wants to use GNU PG UDEB during the installer, give a holler, because um, it's probably going to go away. Um, in the GNU PG ecosystem, there's the pin entry tools, which is how GPG actually interacts with the user. Um, so Upstream has made a number of choices recently to make that streamlined um, and more sort of graphically in line with existing user interface toolkits. Um, I think those changes are really awesome. Um, there's a GNOME 3 work, there's QT work that's moving I think from four to five. Um, one of the potentially scary changes upstream is that this means, prop one of the things about pin entry is that it, it used to do very, it was very careful about locking memory so that the memory wouldn't be swapped. Um, which means so that the password you typed into the pin entry wouldn't be written to disk um, by accident. Um, Upstream is kind of moving away from that. And one of the reasons they're moving away from that, I think, is um, because the, um, it meant basically maintaining all your own user interface tools, which meant that uh, whatever user interface there was didn't integrate with whatever people's user experience was. And part of the move towards making this stuff usable is making it fit in your environment. So the move away from let's maintain our own sort of variant stack of QT and our variant stack of GTK 
so that we can build this stuff and make sure that the memory never gets locked, has, is, is kind of, that justification is going out. Um, so yes, your password might get swapped to disk as a result of this change. On the other hand, if you're using a modern system and it's a laptop, you probably hibernate your laptop. And even locked memory gets hibernated to disk. So the protections against locked memory are not as good as they used to be either. So I think this is a move in the right direction. It's a move towards usability. There's a particular case where maybe it's a slight move away from um, security, but I actually think getting more people using it will be a broader help to security overall compared to um, less people using it. I'll repeat, I'll, 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 repeat the, I'll repeat the question if the mic doesn't come. The question was, does it also count for pin entry curses? Um, I'm looking to Werner to see. He's, <laughs> he's shrugging. Um, yeah, pin entry curses may also be making the same set of trade-offs. Yeah, so, so the, anyway, it may also be pin entry curses. Um, if you can think of ways that we can fix that with pin entry curses or, th or, or improve that, that would be great. Uh, here's a microphone, Werner, if you can. Um, there would be an uh, easy solution and uh, just uh, uh, have an encrypted swap space. Have an encrypted swap, swap space, space, right. That's much, much easier and we could um, throw away all, the, all these things and it's, e it's just easier. And of course something which um, uh, triggers um, the clearing the memory and the hibernation. But that's right. the packaging or so administration thing. So the, I, I really would vote for, for, for that, that um, encrypted swap space would be the default of the systems because I I don't think that it's any performance issue then, anyway. Yep. Wait, is encrypted swap space the default in Debian? I don't it's know. It's not, actually but sure. it probably should the, be. The, the OpenBSD had that, so. Uh, should, we, <coughs> some, can someone file that bug right now? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we, like, these are the kinds of things that we can do as an operating system that no individual upstream can do, um, and it would be better for all of our users. So we should make encrypted swap the default, and it would remove some of this concern. Thank you. Well, in, uh, my understanding is that an encrypted swap by default would require Luke's or some type of encryption, and then you'd have to have a password you'd enter. That, I think it's, is that not the case? No, there, there are techniques to do it without that, where, oh, you, ra where you randomize the encryption key for your swap at each boot. Oh, right, okay. You don't need to know it. Right. But uh, yeah. So there are trade-offs, and we need to, and, but as, a, as an operating system, we can figure out how to do those trade-offs to protect the largest number of people. Right now, we're probably not doing our best job at that, and um, maybe that's a separate session we can have about how do we deal with this kind of question, um, you know, encrypted swap, but not, this is not GNU-PG. Um, but, th like, but this is the sort of thing that I really want Debian to do, because we are the only folks in a position to do this, right? This is not something that anyone upstream can do for us. So we may also diverge in GNU, P sorry, back to GNU PG from, from the encrypted swap questions. We may diverge from upstream somewhat in the Debian packaging. Um, uh, we're not interested in doing wild divergence. We want to minimize the deltas where possible, but there are a lot of guides out there that are sort of fiddly guides that say, you got to do this thing and change this config and remember, make sure this config is there. And some of those guides are more sensible than others. And what we would like to do is to reduce the size of those guides to the point where if possible, the guide says, just use an up-to-date GNU PG. And um, so the way we may diverge from those is to potentially fit, um, change, with some change some defaults to try to make them more secure so that the guides have less to say. Um, and we're going to do that probably in unstable and therefore maybe testing. Um, and if we get reports of interoperability failures from folks in unstable and testing, we may revert those changes before they hit stable. But we have an opportunity to try to encourage people to use stronger defaults without asking them to go fiddle with their text files, because that's something that people don't do unless they're mega nerds. We want this to work for everybody. Um, so we're going we're gonna to adjust it some. We're going to look for interoperability problems. And we're going to try to get some of these changes back upstream if we can. Another example is some Linux-specific hardening. Um, one change that we made uh, recently is to go ahead and avoid the ability to dump the memory of the GNU-PG process. Um, the agent via, process. Uh, yeah, sorry, the agent process, thank you, mm -hmm. via, um, via ptrace. Um, and that's something that Upstream is um, unwilling to do because there are other ways that those processes can be attacked, which is definitely the case. Um, but here's a particular attack. We can mitigate it. So um, we're 
experimenting with mitigating it right now in, in uh, Debian Unstable. If it turns out to cause too many problems, we can also revert that as well. Um, but so these are a couple of places where we might diverge from upstream. Hopefully our experiences in Debian can inform upstream and help them decide whether they want to take those changes or not. If we can get them back upstream, I would love it. Um, if it turns out that we diverge a little bit, I also have no problem with that. We want to minimize our divergence. Um, so desktop integration is one of the ongoing um, pieces of work. Werner mentioned a push towards usability as a usability as a security feature, feature um, for the future of GPG. And desktop integration is a big part of that. The work on pin entry has been um, a big part of that. Um, and we had this conflict for a long time between GNOME and GNU-PG about who gets to provide the GNU-PG agent interface and what is a proper GNU-PG agent interface and how can we evolve the GNU-PG agent interface if different implementations are supporting different feature sets. There's a sense that it was being hijacked. Um, and that fight is over. I'm really pleased to announce that the fight is over. Things are better for everyone now. Um, a bunch of folks, um, the folks who are up here is a mix of people from different teams, from GNOME and GNU-PG, who managed to resolve this in a way that I think is going to be better for everyone um, going forward. It's going to be more usable and more secure. Um, so in light of that kind of improvement, I'd like to ask if people have ideas about how we can do better desktop integration, better still, um, to suggest those changes. And if there's ways that we can do that within Debian where we have, you know, we can act as the social glue between projects and we can say, look, here's how the negotiations work. We should be able to solve this stuff within Debian. Um, integration is what we're doing as a distro. So let's do that and let's improve it and make it better. Um, if you have ideas for how to do better integration, let us know. Possible future ideas, um, better testing. Auto package test is pretty cool. Um, there's a proposal for doing a little bit of that. We'd like to do a lot more of that. If folks don't know about auto package test, check it out. It's a way that once your package has been built, it's like a test suite uh, for the built package as opposed to a test suite while you're building it. So you can actually declare, I want an environment that has the following other packages installed, and I want to execute this stuff, and the output and the return code should look like this. Um, so you can actually test your system in an integrated way with other pieces of the software ecosystem. And then you can get reports that say, hey, this thing broke. So we'd like to do some of that. Um, we'd like to find ways to streamline the user experience for what we know to be some best practices, like the use of smart cards and like the use of offline master keys. Um, currently, it's a little bit um, fancy to get that done. And if we can find a way to streamline that that doesn't cause additional support headaches down the line, we'd like to do that. Um, if anybody here is working on one of the language teams, like Ruby or Python or Perl or uh, there's lots of others. And forgive me if I've forgotten your favorite one. Um, but we ha GPG has programmatic interfaces like Astuon and GPGME, and we'd like to make sure that those are um, well-maintained and well-supported. Um, so if we can work with the language binding teams, we would like to do that. Um, also, user interface and user experience review. You know, the usability is security argument is pretty strong. Let's make sure that this thing is usable. Um, let's figure out how to do that without breaking existing tools that rely on it. Um, and if there are other graphical user interfaces that relate to key ring management or to encryption or decryption support, um, if we can help with that as the GNU PG packaging team, we'd like to do that. So um, just a call for contributions. If you've got ideas from this talk, if you've got ideas before this talk that you've been scared to voice, um, we're friendly, we don't bite, uh, we would love your help. Uh, we would love your suggestions, even if it's a bug report that says this is broken for me, and you can tell us, here's why it's broken. We want to know that. That'll make it better for everybody. So any contributions you have or improvements are totally welcome. Um, do folks have questions? This is how you can get in touch with us. We've got a mailing list. We've got an IRC channel. There's a wiki page with some details. Zoe me again. I remember there was an issue with apt and uh, GPG 2.1 yep. when being installed together not being able to verify things anymore. Yep, so, so I can talk a little already? bit about that. Um, David K, I'll say. Yeah, we worked on that. We worked on, thanks. So, <laughs> so we worked on that together. We talked through what was needed to be done, and I think it's, and, and it is resolved. So um, that, that, that kind of interaction was awesome, by the way. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, and I'm glad that we could have the conversation that we did. Um, so, oh, question from Enrico. Um, I have a bunch. Okay. Um, one is auditing. Uh, we currently, I currently have no way to uh, get an audit log of every time my key is used in Debian. 
Um, it would be inter I would like to have it because that would allow me to spot replay attacks or whether my key has been compromised. Uh -huh. My bank does send me an email every time I log into the home banking. Uh -huh. And it would be I some time ago toyed with a thingy that generated an RSS feed of every time my key was uh, something that was signed with my key was like taken into the archive, for example. Um, it was, or it could be, so it could be like package uploads, uh, requests to uh, DB Debian org for changing my uh, yeah. credential, that sort of things. Um, uh, that'd be nice to have. Uh, it wasn't easy, but I'd like to discuss it. And that's one. And another one is we currently require two signatures on a key for some or one and another trust path to the key to the web of core of the web of trust uh, to accept a developer and we're talking about tofu uh, i'd like to have a conversation about possibly with you other dam keyring mind with all you um, about uh, how do things uh, change in debian with regards to that it could be we want a key that has a repu as enough of a reputation attached to it uh, that it wouldn't have been easy to create, for example. Okay. Uh, so uh, these are both great ideas, and I, I'm not sure that they relate specifically to the GNU PG packaging team. You might be mistaking right. my hat here. GNU I'm wearing PG my GNU PG packaging team and not my keyring maint team hat. I, um, um, it was like so, so, but but I, <laughs> I don't want that hat. That's your hat. I definitely don't want to be responsible for Obnam. Well, you're right. I was about <laughs> I was thinking about GNUPG used by Debian rather than uh, GNUPG packaging. So sorry about that. No, no, that. But those are both good ideas, and if there's ways that we can support that, I would I would like to. Um, we should definitely talk about this tofu, the relationship between tofu and the web of trust. I think that the tofu proposals in GNUPG are not at all intended to make the web of trust impossible to use. The goal is to make it. So let me actually explain a little bit about my relationship with Tofu and GNUPG. I actually have a workflow with a set of really hacky scripts that implements Tofu for me, and I've been using it for two years, um, or three years now, where when I email with somebody and I think that's their key, I convince GNUPG locally that, their key is va that that key is valid in a way that GNUPG won't tell other people that I think that that's their key. Because I don't want to announce it to everybody else, but I want it to be true for myself that this is the key that they're using. So um, so I don't think that the move to Tofu in upstream is going to make it harder for us to do the kind of web of trust connections that we're currently doing um, within Debian. And I don't think, it, I don't think they're going to get in the way or conflict at all. If anything, it may make it easier to have those connections made without making it less secure. Too many negatives. Um, so this this renaming of GPG two to just GPG is this something that's also being done upstream or being coordinated with other distros? We've been shipping a patch for years that renames bin user bin GNU PG user bin GPG to user bin GPG two. Oh so really? So this is actually yeah. bringing it in line with upstream. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And All there right. are other distros that have shipped user bin GPG as a GNU PG two in two point something. For for quite a long time now. Okay. Yeah, I think Fedora has been on 2.0 for at least a little while. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Can we please have uh, backports instead of being required to run unstable? Can you have backports instead of being required unsta uh, to run unstable? Backports of what? Of, uh, of 2.1. The, yeah, the backports yes. policy is we may not put things in backports unless they're in testing. <laughs> I do not plan to ask for an exception to backports policy. Which is so if your concern away. is that you want it in a backport, help us fix the bugs that keep it out of testing. Okay? okay. And then we can talk about backports. I think, I think Noodles had a... This is sort of a bigger point, but I think backports are very important because 2.1 adds a bunch of things that 1.4 and 2.0 are currently mangling in Debian. And, and that's causing us with our keyring main hats on problems. Yeah. So if there was a commitment by the team to maintain a backport, I think that would be very helpful. 
Okay. And, and if you need manpower to do that, then I'm happy to be corralled into helping that happen. Because I'm writing that down right now. You, <laughs> it. you know how Volunteers. to find me. I don't think anyone's against the backboard. Yeah. But we do want to make sure that, 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 it's in, that it's good enough to meet the quality of the backport. There's an obvious need to, to, to do security commitment to backports. And yep. I understand that that's a lot of work that has to be signed up to. Otherwise, there's absolutely no point putting it in. Yep. But I think that will be very useful in terms of getting access to things like ECC out into the wider world, at least for people to play with. Right. And there may be parts of the Debian infrastructure that want to run stable plus backports that we would like to be able to accept ECC signatures on, for example. So yes, I agree. Thank you. For, for offering that. Uh, one more question um, about the hardware support. Uh, I make use of tokens for GPG keys, and the support right now it's a bit, let's say, messy, in the sense that UDEV, who should be providing UDEV rules? Right now it's GNUPG1, I think. So if I have only GNUPG2, I don't have the rules for that. And now that you are transition, have you already transitioned? Why is not upstream keeping the list of that stuff? So I have to go and ask every supporter, every provider of a token, like, please go and tell them to, to also add your rule, your ID. That's the first one. And the second one is like SC daemon, the agent for the hardware stuff, and the PCSC daemon, which is the system-wide daemon. They always like fight between them. They are a bit racy. Right now. It's better, I mean, I'm not having problem daily, but in the past it was a bit messy. Now, I don't know where the support is going, if they are merging, if they plan to reuse the same kind of code or whatever. So that would be my question. So um, you might want to hand the... Uh, Nibed, would you yeah. like to talk about that? <laughs> the, right can behind you, the, you can the answer this question Nibed. even better. Ah, I, I maintain a demon in up, upstream, so perhaps the... The, if you ha encounter some problem, uh, that's because of my badness, perhaps. And uh, but these days, the SC daemon in upstream is uh, has a capability to to handle more leaders. I mean, that it supports more leaders. So we don't need uh, PC SC demo anymore for most of cases. Yes. Ponty was also a bit as a distribution user because I have not only a GPG key, I also have keys for PKCS 11 or whatever other secret key that I so have on tokens. So I start having like demons for handling multiple stuff and then I have to configure a C daemon to just take care of the GPG token and not the other cards. It's like my, my setup is a bit messy right now. So you're basically saying you've got... So my question is like what, what do you plan to do as a distribution like? Do you want to set up a policy like SC daemon? Because I know that SC daemon could use PCSD, but it doesn't by default, something like that. So it's like, do we want to unify the handling of all the tokens, cryptographic, cryptographic tokens that exist in PCSD and then use the other helpers on top of PCSD, or do we want to keep them split or whatever? That was like my question. So I don't have a good instinct on that, and I, my workflow doesn't include those tokens, but I'm very interested in the question. Okay. Um, I think uh, Nikos had a talk last session um, about the idea of a unified crypto um, policy. Uh, I was there, but it was something completely different. It was more about handling which kind of algorithm and rules okay. every library should support so, by default. So it sounds like you might have instincts about, how we, about ways that might work or that work for you or work better for you. Um, if there are things that we can be doing better in terms of, uh, as a distro, accumulating UDEV rules, um, figuring out ownership of certain kinds of devices um, that would actually work across multiple plat multiple systems, I agree with you. That's something uh, that Debian is, is in a position to do. Um, I, I'd be, I'm willing to work with you on trying to figure out how to fix that, and that probably will mean bug reports against multiple packages. I also took a note of your question about the UDEV rules within GPG itself, and yes, those will be moving to the package that provides user bin GPG. We can talk about that in private later, but my question was more like, am I the only one that is having these issues? I mean, I have multiple keys because I work in an hostile environment sometimes, and am I the only one that is having these issues? That was strange for me. When I was eating these bugs, it was like, when you are the first doing something and nobody's having the same issues, like, yeah. strange. Thanks. It sounds like you're the first person in this room with those issues. Yeah. <laughs> Um, five, five years ago, I encountered similar issues, and uh, 
my answer is my own project that is GNUG token. So I, I recommend uh, <laughs> GNUG token for your project, for your use. <laughs> I will try. So do we have more questions? There's about um, seven minutes left, but if we want to, uh, five minutes left, if, but if we, if we get five extra minutes out of the day, oh, there's one in the back there. <laughs> this one is not strictly related to Debian, but to upstream GNUPG. Uh, it could be easier to implement the best practices. I mean, it's highly troublesome to generate a, a, master, a master key without the encrypted part. You have to do so many steps. If it would do just write a key missing the, the, the primary portion, to a file and the complete key to another file and you generate a secret key, it would be much easier than you just store away the, the complete key and mm -hmm. you already have one that's missing the, the secret part so you can use that as your, well, protected but still daily use keys that you cannot sign other keys, but yes. Yes. So, so it could be easier. That would be I agree that could be easier and I don't know whether that's actually something specifically for upstream. If we can find specific things that we could fix within upstream, that would be great. But I put this up here as possible futures, you know, streamlining known best practices, offline primary keys. I mean, I, I fully agree with you that this is an important thing to work on to make it easier for people to do than the current dance. Yes, so, and so about, about the ECC, we should have a guide for Debian people trying to use ECC keys uh, because um, you actually have to read that safe, cu safe curves dot crypto to actually know what's the problem. So I mean, sometimes they are too hard to implement, so you should select a curve because it's easier to not make badly mistakes in code than the nice to need the NIST ones. And they are actually, uh, I think, they are more vulnerable to some attacks than curve. So, um, so with my keyring mate hat on, I think we don't want to encourage anyone to switch to, to ECC DNS, right yes. now. I think we want to make sure that this software is deployed so we can deal with ECC yes, keys. Yes, but before, it's not just to have the software that can handle that, uh, but before we tell people that, well, you can try now, we should have a simple guide if the defaults are not already geared towards that, that uh, teaches people a bit about what are the differences between the several curves available in simple terms? J just to reiterate the, the key ring main point, um, we're a long way off being able to accept ECC keys in the Debian key ring and them to work reliably. Um, every single piece of the Debian infrastructure that talks to a GPG key that you expect to work on will have to have 2.1 installed. It's not even in testing, let alone stable at the moment. So uh, I would imagine we're at least two and possibly four years off those being widely supported in Debian. That, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at how we can get them in the hands of developers. And I, I'm, I'm glad to see that 2.1 is hit unstable, which it hadn't last time I looked. Um, I, I checked before heckling you. Um, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, absolutely play with it, but don't expect it to work on the Debian infrastructure as being a thing you can use for at least two years, and I would say potentially up to four years because of the number of systems that it will be required to understand them. Right, which is why we're switching now, so that we can have it in two years or four years, instead of in six years or eight years. And in two years, we should probably have a lot more knowledge about which curves right. are better yeah. to use. Right, yes. and at that point, hopefully the defaults, when, when we do get that, when it's time to turn those things on, then the defaults should be simple, and we shouldn't need too much. I mean, documentation is great for those people who read it. <laughs> um, but hopefully the simple key generation steps will just do the right thing and make a strong key for people to use once, once we're ready for people to start using them. Okay, thank you. Sorry, thanks. Rudy, did you want to say something? Yeah, about the, uh, the offline key, offline key system. Well, actually with the offline primary key or with 2.1, it's really, really simple to do that. Uh, you use dash dash key grip of the listing to see the key grip of the key and then you go and delete the private, the private uh, file, the private and the private ideas. We won things directory. There's a file with this key grab dot dot key. You just delete this one, and it is an offline key. Of course, you should have on your secure laptop. You should have a, a copy of it 
uh, so you can still use it. But it's, it's really, really easy. It just if it's not there, it's an offline key. That's how it works. Cool. All right. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, and I hope to see you on the mailing list, IRC. Um, get in touch with us. Let us know what we can do. Um, and of course, in the BTS. We'll see you there. Thanks. <laughs>